Hello and welcome to another Excel video with Rich Kerr. In this scenario we're going to look at the power of the count ifs, sum ifs, and average ifs functions to extract summary information about a larger data set. We'll also enhance our formulas by using named ranges to refer to the data in columns B, C, and D in our formulas. So if you want to pause the video and set up some sample data I've got these four columns of data uh, that go from row 1 down to row 101 and I've got a mixture of customer names, locations, and dollar amounts which we'll be using in our formula. So if you want to pause and uh, grab a data set or make one up similar to this and then we'll start, uh, we'll start the exercise. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do to simplify the process of creating my formulas is have Excel automatically create some named ranges for me to refer to the data in the columns that will be mentioned in my formulas. So I'm going to click a single cell anywhere in the large data set that appears from A1 through D101. I'll click over there and press Control A on my keyboard. So you press Control A which will select the contiguous range of data. Now you don't want to press Control A too long because that selects the entire worksheet. Okay, so if you did that inadvertently just click back inside the data and a quick control A will select just the contiguous range. So I've got that range selected and I'm going to the formulas tab of my ribbon and on the formulas tab we'll click the create from selection icon which is found in the defined names area. Right, so we have a number of icons there that help us uh, in working with named ranges and this will actually create them for us. So we click that option and Excel selects the appropriate option for us here that we want to create named ranges from the values in the top row. So I ensure that that's the only one that's selected and I click OK. So now, just like that, you created four new named ranges, amount, customer, invoice number, and location. Uh, I even put the underscore between invoice and the abbreviation for the word number because you cannot have uh, spaces in the name of your ranges. So because the top of that column had invoice space number, that function create from selection put the underscore for me. Okay, so invoice number is all the data from A2 down through A101. And similarly, uh, the range called customer that goes from B2 down to B101 and so on and so forth. So those main ranges set up, let's say that you're interested in finding out the number of invoices that went to the Hilton in Dallas. I'm going to type the word Hilton under the customer heading here in cell F2 and for location I'll type Dallas. So again I've got multiple criteria which is why we're using the count ifs plural rather than just count if. So I have equals count ifs open paren and my first criteria range right this is going to be a series of pairings of criteria ranges and criteria. So my first criteria range is called customer. And again, that's the data between B2 and B101. You can actually see that it's highlighted in blue to correspond to the blue color of the text inside the formula. And then comma, my criteria that I'm looking for in the customer range is Hilton, which I've got sitting in cell F2. Okay. Now you could also simply type in the word Hilton inside a pair of quotation marks, but by having Hilton sitting in a cell, it will make it easier if I want to change the customer name. I won't have to modify the formula. I can just change the value sitting in cell F2. Okay, comma. The second pair of criteria range and criteria, well, the criteria range will be location. Well, it's kind of nice, too, as you start typing, uh, you'll see that the drop-down list of Excel functions includes your named ranges, right? So it has a little tag icon rather than the function icon. So if I'm highlighted on that function or that, that named range in my list, I can hit tab to finish it out. So I press tab, that finished the spelling of location as the name of my range in my formula, and then comma G2. So G2 has the word Dallas. So when I hit the enter key, I find that there are 11 entries in that other data set where the customer is Hilton and the location is Dallas. Now to confirm that, I'm going to change this second one uh, that says Hilton Dallas. I'm going to change that to Chicago. 
And so then you see the count for Hilton Dallas goes down to 10. Okay. All right, so that we know that it's working. We can see that it dynamically adjusts when we change either the customer or the, or the location. So for example, if I find another Dallas entry uh, that currently says Marriott, right? So here's an entry that says Dallas, but the customer is Marriott. I'll change the customer to Hilton, and now the count goes back up to 11. Okay, so we can see that that's working. Let's look at the total sales to uh, Hilton in Dallas. So uh, since we're getting a total, we want a sum ifs, not, uh, not a count ifs. So we have equals sum ifs, open paren, and the first parameter of the sum ifs function will be the range that you're summing. You know, in other words, the range that has the, the numerical values that you need to total. So for us, that's the range called amount. And since we took that step of naming the ranges, it just makes writing the formula so much easier, right? Less tedium. So after I indicate my sum range, comma, the rest of the sum ifs formula is identical to what I did with count ifs. I've got customer, comma, F2 for Hilton, and then comma, location, comma, G2 for Dallas. And there we go. I get 178,499. And so to test, I'll find a Hilton Dallas entry, right? And so I'll change that to uh, 5,000. And then we see that that number went up. All right, so that number changed in cell I2. All right, now for the average sale, well, this would be average ifs. Average ifs. And then the structure of the formula will be identical to what you just did with some ifs except that you're averaging rather than summing. So my average range is the amount range, comma, and then I have customer, comma, F2, and then comma, location, comma, G2. And you just take a look at that formula and you can see how much easier it is to look at when you're using named ranges rather than having D2 colon D101 for the amount uh, B2 colon B101 for the customer range, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's easier to read, easier to decipher, and easier to work with. So I have my enter key and I get 1684.36. So to test that that's working, I'll go and change another Hilton Dallas to some other value. So maybe I'll change invoice number 22 from uh, Dallas, I'll change that to Boston. So the count went down to 10 rather than 11, and both the total sales and the average sale uh, changed as well. Now, if I change a dollar amount on another entry, so if I change the dollar amount for this invoice number 7 to the Marriott in Atlanta, we should see no impact on the values over to the right. So I'll change this value to 10,000, but nothing changed here because our criteria is Hilton in Dallas, so it's not impacted by Sheraton in Boston. So that's count ifs some ifs and average ifs. I hope you find this useful guys and please subscribe so you'll be alerted as I post new videos to the channel. Thank you so much for your time. Have a productive day.